The State Agriculture Department is hoping to do its part to solve South Africa's food insecurity challenges. MEC Timbiling uh, Mangisa says work is also being done to turn the tide on corruption and the maladministration of funds. That resolution comes as the country battles a rising cost of living, spurred on in part by global economic challenges. For more on this, let's speak to the MEC himself, who joins us now via our video link. And it's lovely to have you on the program, sir. Thanks very much indeed for your time. Before we speak about the kind of contributions that the Agriculture Department of the Free State can make to solve the country's food insecurity issues, we have to start with what you're doing firstly internally to solve some of the corruption challenges you're facing. Most recently, the former HOD in the Agriculture Department being released on 10,000 rand bail in connection to the Estira Dairy Farm saga. You've got a lot on your plate. Good morning, Ayanda, and uh, good morning to your viewers. Thanks for the opportunity. Now, it's true, and uh, I would still maintain that we need to allow the law to take its course, and uh, we support that program. Uh, the Fred Dairy Farm has now been handed over to beneficiaries, and they are now running the farm on their own. We have advertised now for a 49% stakeholder, someone who's competent to help them through the process and assist the farm to work successfully. But as you said earlier on, we need to turn our fortunes, we need to turn things around in the free state, and we are committed into that endeavor, of course, propelled by the premier on the uh, finding the, uh, building the free state that we want. So what we do now uh, uh, to cap or to avoid what happened in the past is to um, work closely with the Auditor General's office that the Auditor General does not actually audit us at the end of the financial year end. They work with us the path, they interact with us uh, periodically to understand that how far and how fast we are doing our things in line, of course, with the law and the expectation. We also work with provincial treasury and national treasury also to test and review our processes of tendering to ensure that they are in line and in keeping with the law. But we also have the Department of Land and Rural Development National monitoring our programs and most of the time do uh, monitoring and visiting us and checking programs in local so that they are compliant to the requirement. That is over and above our own monitoring and evaluation process. Yeah. Which... So this is what we are trying to do to keep the mistakes uh, that has happened in the past and in keeping and taking charge of the um, taxes of the people that they've earned. And, and they've given to the state to use responsibly. Sure, and I imagine some of those checks and balances were always in place, but the difficulty is that the individuals who are meant to implement some of those checks and balances themselves are being implicated and graft. I mean, you started off by saying that, you know, it's now beneficiaries at Estina who are running that farm. We spoke to them earlier this year. Many of them are really unhappy. In fact, one individual went as far as to say that she feels things were much better when the Guptas were supposedly running that Estina dairy farm. And I think she was speaking more to her material conditions because we even know at that stage, very illegitimate things were said to be happening. No, no, that one was an employee. The beneficiaries are not working at the farm. That mm -hmm. one is an employee. What happens is that the chairperson of the trust, we open a trust for all uh, 65 beneficiaries. And I must say, we are proud about handing over the farm to beneficiaries because they then became instant millionaires. Now, the trust, the chairperson of the trust, uh, decided unilaterally to go and interfere with employees, which is something that we've cautioned him, and we wanted to inform all trustees to understand the activities of the chairperson. And we, we made him aware that what he's doing is not in line with the law. He's done a lot of wrong things which are not really... Um, want to disclose now, but we are correcting that situation, but we are bringing beneficiaries on board. Um, so, so what we do here to, to, to make amends is to focus on rebuilding the free state. And remember, the free state used to be the food basket of the country, especially on maize. We want to reclaim that glory. And in doing so, our main focus is the young people uh, that we are recruiting into farming and They've shown passion, they've shown love, they've shown dedication. We've got more than 300 young people who are farmers in the free state 
who are doing well. And we are saying to these young people, as long as you show this passion and love, we will support you. It is our duty to make sure that they succeed. But it is dependent on them to actually succeed finally. And these ones that we have incubated have, have done wonders, and they are very creative. I can just mention to you, we have a farmer in the free state who does mushroom, and probably the only farmer in the free state, black farmer in the free state who does mushrooms, and he's doing well. Mm. We've got a farmer in the free state, a young lady who does wonders with, with vegetables. She does red carrots. She does different colors of broncoli. That's the innovation that young people and the passion they have, and we support them. They don't do the normal, uh, traditional way of farming, but they still produce uh, vegetables and produce uh, products, commodities that are very useful in the markets. Yeah. You've got one lady who does coffee, butternut coffee, and probably the only person in South Africa who does that. So we are bringing these young people with their innovation and excitement to say, you guys can do it, and they are doing it, and we are very proud about it. I guess the question also becomes, I wonder how many more of those individuals you could have been able to help if we were able to avert the really massive corruption scandals to have rocked your department. I mean, the Nulane investment fraud and money laundering case is another case in point. In fact, it's that particular matter that the NPA is using to try to get the Guptas back in this country. It's another saga that happened in your department with a former head of the agriculture department also being released on bail in relation to that saga. Uh, speak to me, I guess, about the levels of confidence perhaps this might have, um, or the lack of confidence, I beg your pardon, this might now place on this department, given, again, these grand-scale corruption scandals. I under you hit the nail on the head. We, we could have helped a lot and taking many people out of poverty and created a lot of job opportunities. But um, that is what under under the bridge now. The, the, the criminal justice system is dealing with that issue. And that's why the president has made a call, and we are all into that call, that we need a, to advance to a corrupt-free South Africa. We need to safeguard the taxes that people pay to government and having worked very tirelessly and earnestly for that money and given to government to improve their lives. You, you, you've covered that very well. But remember, we must move on and try to make amends and do better now, as, as we are doing. The farming community generally is people who are old, in the region of 65, 60 years old. And we, we're trying to create a layer that is going to take over because that system is not is not sustainable. That's why we are focusing on young people. That's why we are focusing on youth, on, on, on women, to say you are now a new crop or cohort of people that can take farming further. And that will create sustainability on the food security that you have mentioned. And for us, food security is not only availability of food. It is also affordability of food. And if you remember, with the rising prices in the country today, as a result of fuel and as a result of uh, uh, fertilizers, which actually are imported into South Africa, which we don't have a control, it is therefore necessary for us, it's incumbent upon us, to make intervention and mitigate those circumstances. All right. So, so we are in that program where we say we want to make life easier in this daunting environment we live in. Sure. Uh, for the sake of the beneficiaries and everybody who relies on government working, I hope uh, some of these prospects do materialize. For now, let me thank you for your time. The MEC of Agriculture and Rural Development in the Free State is Tembeni Nglangisa. Once again, MEC, thanks very much indeed.